Today is November the 9th, 2020. This is the Service Hero Show, 365 Days of Awesome. Celebrate success through service. My name is Tamara Hunter and I am your host. This is the show where we share the inspiring stories of those that are inspiring others. So let's do this. Today we have two nominated service heroes, a duo, a story that is absolutely, yes, inspiring. They are two, if you will, young people that are making a huge difference. And today is a big day. We're going to talk about this and we're going to be talking about a story that, well, let's say that Lauren Harris, Many know him, bathrobe moments. He got a hold of me and said, Tamara, you need to feature these two young people. He was so impressed with them. And so then we we had a, a chance to visit and we decided that today was the day we wanted to tell their story for a big reason. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce a newly married couple, Alexis and justin black welcome thank Hello. you so much for having us hello how are you doing <laughs> i do great and i want to welcome helene helene wilson one of our buddies one of our ambassadors the first ambassador of the chat in fact mm -hmm. and thank you for the welcome and yes you know okay i'm gonna be honest guys because i always am uh, i said her name wrong here I put Alexa and it's Alex S. And so at least you know Helene and you can say Alex S with a I S rather than the A. I'm partial to the A and you can see why I've got three of them in my name. So forgive me. <laughs> you know, and, and, and yeah, so that's, you know, there you go. And so I wanted her to be able to welcome you. She's looking for the name. Um, Today's a big day. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. A very big day. Um, today, we officially launched our book, Redefining Normal, How to Foster Kids, Beat the Odds, and Discover Healing, Happiness, and Love. Here's our book. And oh, there it, it is, also, too. <laughs> um, yes, this is officially our launch day. Um, it is available on all platforms, our website, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And we're just excited to share our story, nervous, um a bunch of different emotions today but we're just thankful that god has put this on our hearts to, to share with the world and um, we know for a fact that this will help improve someone's li life in one way or another so um this is a book that has been in our heart for a very long time and we're just happy to share it with people mm -hmm. well your stories are absolutely incredible and in fact film sometimes tells more of a story than even words so we're going to go to a little bit of film right now and then we're going to come back and then alexis i'm going to let you then continue the thought so let's go here first Library. In undergrad, I earned more than $200,000 in scholarships that has allowed me to study abroad eight times, travel to 27 countries, and pay for my tuition and books. My name is Alexis Slenderman, and I'm from Flint, Michigan. I'm a recent graduate of Western Michigan University, as well as a foster care alum. Growing up, I was told that college was a waste of time, 
but my godparents planted the seed that I needed to go. Once I decided that I would, the biggest question was, how would I pay for it? I applied for any and everything my junior and senior year of high school and received over 10 scholarships my freshman year. From years of trial and error, I've developed techniques to assist students to be successful in their college career. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. And and just to start painting a picture, and, and I know that we're talking about the book and the book has other elements to it. However, to understand a little of the story, sometimes you need to know the story behind the story, right? And and when I started doing a little bit of research on you guys, I was like, oh, we got a lot more going on here. And thank you, Carol Berzins. Carol is one of our senior ambassadors of the Buddies, and she is also one of the producers of not only this show, but our tour of love that is coming to <laughs> in three weeks from today, three weeks from love. right now, we will be kicking off the tour of love. And so, yes, we are live. Thank you. She always lets us know that we are live. That means we are streaming throughout the world to 80 million screens and uh, via Roku, Amazon, Fire TV, Apple TV, Android TV, all social media, either now or delayed. And I want you all to get your phones out. And if you haven't gotten the E360 TV app, from your app store, it is free, get it. And I'm talking all of you out there, you out there that's international, uh -huh, because we're gonna be doing some really cool stuff in three weeks and we want you to all be a part of it. And so sound is good, thank you, sound check. And now let's go into this. You two have something in common that I don't know the answer to this, and I am really interested to hear. You both were raised in a situation that is, to some, not too different, to others, completely foreign. Why don't we go into that? Because I think that that has a big piece to why it is I started with your story right now, Alexis, because I wanted to put it out there that that the two of you are people that are are taking this world and saying, OK, let's do this. Yet you're coming from a life and a set of circumstances that some people could say, wait a minute, you know, you could claim unfair or you could claim whatever it may be. Yet you've looked at it in completely different ways and you've been transparent about it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us what it is that you two have in common from your youth? Yeah, so we both grew up in foster care. I entered foster care at 13 and Justin, Justin entered at nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we both, yeah, just pretty much experienced the foster care system and and biggest thing about our situation was just overcoming not having biological parents was one, but just also figuring out life for ourselves and learning to be independent, but also interdependent on people who truly loved it. So I think that was the biggest thing that we had to learn throughout our experiences. Okay, I, I wanna go there a little deeper because you know, a lot of people, and I'm sure you talk about it in the book, I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> However, right now I know that I've been involved in things uh, because I run a nonprofit. There are others that are very much out there that that n they educate on the foster care system mm -hmm. and how the foster care system is is problematic. It, it, there can be a lot of abuse. There can be a lot of um, if if you make it through the system the odds of making it through the system and being healthy and going on are are truly they're you know let's just be honest they're they're not the highest numbers if you will of, of yeah. percentages <clears throat> what was your experiences you yeah first? so uh, <laughs> just diving into my experience at uh, nine years old I, my parents deal with a lot of uh, substance abuse issues 
and we grew up in neighborhoods filled with a lot of poverty and a lot of drugs and everything. So um, entering into the foster care system, I was blessed to be with family, uh, moving in initially with my oldest brother and then leaving there after two years, moving with my auntie on my dad's side and then leaving there after about five or six years and then moving with some of my be my brother's best friend parents for a while, about eight months, but just at that point starting to travel around for a little bit and not ha feeling like I had a, a safe home where I can call my own. Mm -hmm. And I moved to a group home. And even though there was some ups and downs in that situation, the structure of the home in general was set up where this is surrounded by a lot of different mentors. And I grew up in Detroit and I was able to kind of separate myself from family uh, once, uh, or my biological family for quite a bit and kind of developed my own identity because for a while I was kind of just following around anybody that I looked up to may not have been the most healthy, may not have been the most positive, but uh, those are my role models at the time. So once I kind of separated and I was on my own, I had to figure things out by myself, I kind of had to develop a, a identity that was conducive for my future and that would, would help me prosper and help me get through those situations. And I had the mentors and other people who were contributing to me and believing in me more than I believed in myself. Because I wanted things like, I wanted to go to college, but I didn't believe that I could do it. And then I got around the mentors who told me that I could do it and believed in me to do so. And that's when I was able to actually do those things. So that's just how my story kind of came along and my journey was overall. Wow. Wow. And Carol is saying that she grew up in a foster care also mm -hmm. in the system. So, okay. So Alexis, what was it like for you? Yeah. So um, I'll start when I was a kid. Um, when I was about six, my biological mother, she actually committed suicide. And right after that, um, I was uh, forced to live with my dad full time. Before that, I was living with him part time on weekends, things like that. And um, my right before my mother died, um, they were going through a really nasty, really nasty custody battle over me. And um, my dad essentially won. And I think that that was a large motive for why she did what she did. Um, and then uh, my brother and I, my half brother and I, we were split up. Um, he has a different father than I. And so we were split up and we never lived together again after that. Um, I would see him often because I lived in Flint and so did he. But then, um, I moved around a lot with my dad because he would get different jobs. He would get fired a lot. We'd have to move around. I went to many different schools um, from, I would say, kindergarten to throughout high school. I've, I've been to about 10 schools. Um, and it was a lot of bounce around in that way of, of different uh, living in different areas. And I lived with my dad uh, starting, starting then. Um, and around that time was when the abuse started with him of um, physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. And that occurred until I was about 13 when I um, was kind of forced to tell on him uh, by a friend's mother. Um, and at that point, I was taken out of his house, moved in my aunt and uncle's house, um, which wasn't the best placement for me um, because it was also uh, very um, emotionally and mentally abusive. And so I wasn't really able to deal with what was going on at home. Um, and then to kind of compound that, uh, I was in an abusive relationship for several years. Um, uh, starting from 13 to 21 and living with my aunt, um, she kicked me out. I think it was my junior year of high school, packed up all my stuff, put it in the driveway. And I had to kind of figure out what I was going to do next. Where do I go from there? What do I do? Um, and my foster care worker, thank God for her. I love her so much. I still in contact with her just because I'm so thankful. She said, Alexis, I have the perfect family for you. Just stay patient. And so I, I stayed with my godmom for about a week. And then I was introduced to my foster now adoptive parents, um, Kim and Brian, and they're like literally the greatest people on the planet. Like they, I, if I could give them an award, I would. And <laughs> they're just so incredible. And we're actually staying with them right now. Uh, we have been since we got emergency evacuated in March from South Africa. Uh, so we, we're still here now. <laughs> so thank God for family. But I moved in with them and uh, only lived with them for about six months. But in that six months, I mean, it just absolutely changed my life of being around a healthy family, healthy dynamic, and what does that look like? And then um, they moved away uh, after about six months. And so I was freaking out. I was in that mode of freaking out again of what do I do? Where am I gonna go? And my foster mom's parents actually got licensed so I could stay in their house. So I could stay in the same high school. And that was 
just absolutely remarkable that I could do that. And there was a new law that was passed where it allowed me to stay at the same high school, even though I moved um, about 30 minutes away. Uh, so I was able to stay at the same school. I didn't have to move. And my school actually provided gas cards and other modes of like funding to get me there. So it was just really remarkable that it, it just kind of all worked out. Um, and then I went to college um, at the University of Michigan Flint. Uh, was there for about two years, didn't, wasn't the best place for me. Um, and my uh, foster parents moved to, um, they moved to Kalamazoo where Western Michigan is, or Western Michigan University is, and that's where they went to college. And so they were like, you know, come out here, come check it out, come see if you like it. And uh, walked on campus and I was like, this is it, this is for me. I absolutely fell in love with the school. And then also it was like bonus points that I get to be closer to them. Cause I really just love them and wanna be around them more um, and just be around like a ha healthy family, a healthy environment. And uh, I transferred schools and I um, was with them for a while um, until, well, until they moved, that's another story. Um, but in December, I'm 26 now. And in December, I was actually adopted by them. I wanted that. Oh, as, congratulations. Thank you. I wanted that as my my 26th birthday present. Um, and then also, because we just got married in August, I wanted that as a way to say, like, my dad walked me down the aisle and to, like, have that daddy-daughter dance. And it was just, it was perfect. It was so perfect. Like, I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> well, you know, in fact, I'm going to share something right now in regards to that. Uh -huh. That's all right. You're bringing out all the tricks, all the yeah. tricks of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, when I when I was doing the the research and I saw that, mm. it just it touched me in such a way. And then I thought it was adorable, Alexis, how you were like, yeah, and you put up with the idea of the book, kind of like. I mean, it was said a lot nicer in a wedding type way yeah it was like you're giving justin props for you know like being real and authentic and and working on this book together uh you know i i've i have heard and i agree with you carol congratulations wasn't that beautiful it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. Now, when was this? You just got married not long ago, right? This was August 8th, and we just had our three-month anniversary kind of yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we only, we're only like three months into marriage, but it's beautiful. How exciting. Three months into marriage. And let's see, now your bestsellers and, uh, you know, and having the, the, the wedding shared throughout the world and... <laughs> Um, you know, just another day in the park, right? And and <laughs> because you're redefining normal, and I love that you mm -hmm. are redefining what it means to be quote unquote normal. Mm -hmm. And and <clears throat> I have to share this too. I, I, I love that. <laughs> 
I um, love that picture. It's one of my favorite was, pictures ever. That was supposed to be the book cover, but it was rejected by many people. Yeah, people didn't want that. Yeah, we was, brought cereal to the wedding <laughs> to take that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Are these your favorites? Is that why? Yep. For those yep. with mellows, best I got, ever. I have a couple favorites, but I, it, it's just a season of my life. Depending, <laughs> I was in a, I was in a cocoa pebble. Type season. Move. I was in a Coco Pebble season. I don't know. I was, I, I, I did with the old classic cinnamon toast crunch. I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> it just depends on what's on sale. I feel like yeah. that's your there you go. You know, chocolate or cinnamon. I mean, you know. Yeah, exactly. Me, it's marshmallows. I love marshmallows. <laughs> I, I love that picture though. I was like, oh, that is precious. Yeah. And and you know, and it shows your sense of humor and you know, like, okay, here's this beautiful wedding. I mean, um, it looked like it was hot. Was it hot? Very hot. It was supposed to actually it rain that day. Hot. And and then it ended up being the most beautiful weather ever. And it was hot. And I'm like, I will take hot over rain any day. You guys didn't see the video, but me and my pastor were sweating. Yeah, they were holding <laughs> each other like I know. I I I he was patting my forehead and everything. <laughs> my pastor, he had his like his pastor towel and he was wiping his it looked like somebody pour, was pouring water on his head. And we had on suits and, and tucks and everything. And like, oh man, like let's get through it. Like some people ask me, like, why, why was my face looking like that in the wedding video? But the sun was in my eyes, I was sweating, and I'm like <laughs> trying not to like look too sweaty right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, have photos. we have photos after that. Yeah, all the photos were like after, yeah, they're yeah. after the ceremony. So we were like, let's get through it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it you know. One of the things, and, and it was really hard to cut some stuff because you, what what all was said. However, you know, it was like, I love the way that you turned it around for the 2020, you know, and how this year has been a very interesting year. Yet for the two of you here, you have gotten married. You've released the book. You, you know, uh, and and you got you were adopted this year, right? It was this year, but yeah. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of amazing, wonderful things. And so here it is that now you are authors. I'm going to share one more little clip and then we're going to get, we're going to dive a little deeper. Uh, Cause this one I thought was really, really great. What's up everybody. This is Alexis. Hey, Justin. We are so excited for our book to come out in August. It's called Redefining Our Normal. And it goes into our personal journeys of us unlearning and relearning and what do we need to do to get closer together before we get married next month. We really did this as an exercise to see what other things do we need to work on since we both were in foster care, since we both went through so much trauma and other things of how can we go into marriage and be as successful as possible? And this book is really a testament to that. We shed so many tears reading yeah. this book and writing it together, um, but it's really brought us closer together and we cannot wait to share this with everybody. It is so raw and vulnerable and it's really like publishing our diary, guys. Mm. It is, it is going to blow your mind. I'm telling you, I'm so yeah. excited. And listen, we talk about godly relationships. This is a really vulnerable piece of work. We talk about resiliency. This is not just a relationship book. It's about resiliency, vulnerability, boundaries, breaking generational patterns, and how two individuals overcame the odds and really came together to make a godly relationship. Mm -hmm. And we need you on our launch team. And it, we're really going to need that during launch week in August. Mm -hmm. And you promoting on social media, sharing it with friends and family, really things that you already do in your daily life. But it's really to support us and support our dream and get this out there to other people that it's going to help and impact other people's lives. But the biggest thing is we're going to need reviews on Amazon on launch day. So if that is you, please join us and join our launch team. Put your e email in the DM, in our DMs, in the comments, whatever yeah. it is. And we'll send you a survey to know what your level of commitment is but we are so excited for you to join our launch team thank, thank you guys. thank you <laughs> and we're here. it's launch yes. day now it's now launch the day. day it's here uh, uh, right you know and i love the fact that that you were so organized and that shows also 
you know, the fact that you do put together bl blueprints that you, you know, I loved it also on the video that it talked about how when you decided that, you, yes, you were going to go to college. And so you put that effort in to any, any and everywhere that you could, uh, you know, put the scholarship paperwork out there, do what you could to make your dream come true. And then look at what came in. You were able to pay for school. You were able to have these incredible experiences. You were able to travel the world. You were able to travel the world with your travel buddy, you know, and, and be able to have experiences. Then you put that energy in to the book launch to then rally your team. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Yeah, I know. Truly incredible. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I wanted to really paint the picture to then go now deeper, because really right now there's a lot of different things that I'm sure people are going to be saying, OK, I'd love to know more about what's in that book. I'd love to know also the strategy of being able to. And I've got it here because you shared it with me just uh, this morning that you are number one in social work number one, marriage and long-term relationships, number one, three number ones. We got triple threat going on here. And we actually and, doubled our rating since then too, or a review. So that's awesome. <laughs> you know, absolutely awesome. In fact, you know, <laughs> I, I, I need to take a, a lesson in your playbook, you know, and, and we all do because it, it is absolutely when you, when you put it out there, this is what I love about it. When you put it out there and you believe all things are possible, correct? Really? Mm -hmm. When did you guys meet? We met in 2016 uh, during a uh, summer early transition week, set week for the Cedar Scholars Program. And Cedar Scholars Program is a foster care program for students in higher education at Western Michigan University. She was the junior um, uh, second year at Western Michigan, right? Second year at Western Michigan, but she was just now entering the Cedar Scholars program. And I was the incoming freshman, didn't even start classes yet. And then I meet this girl that seems way out of my league and she's kind of, she, she looks good and everything <laughs> cute, but I'm like, you know, <laughs> Let me see what chances I have. So, you know, I compliment her tattoos and everything. And this is actually, we describe it detail by detail in the first part of the book. But uh, just, you know, just trying to just talk to her one way or one how, but two people just not even looking for a relationship in two different stages of their life coming together when they don't even want a relationship, not looking for one. And yeah, we came together just in, in a crazy, unique way. Exactly. <laughs> Could have said it better. <laughs> well, what? Okay. So, okay. So I heard from Justin. So Alexis, what did you think? Okay. Here's this, here's this cute guy coming into school. He hasn't even started classes yet. You now are in your second, you, you know, you've transferred to a second university, second campus. You've been doing this for a few days, wink, wink, you know. And so here's here he is, the newbie. <gasps> Cute. Okay, yeah. What do you think? Um, so when we first met, like I really didn't pay him any mind. I was just like, who is this little kid trying to talk to? Because <laughs> he looked he looked so much younger back then. Like he he grew up. He looks so much <laughs> He grew up like in his facial features so much. Like if if I could show you what he looked like in 2016, he just looked like such a baby. He had all his like baby fat still in his face. And I still do. I still I mean, like that a bit. Don't age me. I still look. Good. <laughs> I don't know about it, guys. We both look like babies to me. I mean, you know, let's just be real. You know, not babies, but let's just say young young very healthy adults there you go and i was like okay he so young and then i i found him on instagram and i was like he literally just had prom and i've been in college for like over three years <laughs> i'm like this isn't gonna work um and and so but it, you know he i thought he was cute but like 
and like a little, I don't know, just so young. I was just like, I can't do this. Um, but then after at least a couple of days of him sort of pursuing me of like trying to start the conversation and, and everything like that. And there was um, at least two conversations that we had where we're in a huge room with a lot of people talking around us. And it just, we just completely drown everything out. It's we're the only two people in the world. And I've never had that with anybody. And it was just such a beautiful moment. And and I feel kind of bad because I tell them this all the time. And I wrote in the book that um, my friend, she asked me a question and I, I never snap on people. I'm not, I'm not that person. I'm not, I'm like, I don't think I'm a mean person. And I, we were just such a good conversation. And she asked me a question. I'm like, what? And um and he jokes about it, but um after about four days or so of us knowing each other, he told me, you know, if I'm still single by the time he graduates, then he'll marry me. And look at what happened. He graduated in July, and then we got married in August. Yep, I had to do it. <laughs> wow, that okay? You can say that's intention, or. I, I, you know, did, it, was it just, okay, I said it, I have to do it. No, I, I can't <laughs> see that one at all. Not between the two of you. I guess I got to do it now, you know. <laughs> I guess I got to. If she wasn't married, I wasn't married, I graduated. I'm like, are you still, still available? <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, by the way, I got, all these girls have the same dress. And you know, like we we got it done. We got, we can oh, make this happen in a month. <laughs> so, how long did it take to write the book? Yeah, so I guess you could talk more about that because I think I think even though we 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 started writing it once we were emergency evacuated in uh, from South Africa in February. No, and we were. We were, well, I mean, not February. we were emergency evacuated in March, yeah. March 26th specifically. <laughs> and uh, was that because of COVID? Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. So we were emergency evacuated from South Africa. I was studying abroad. She was working on a scholarship expert and volunteering. And we were staying in her uh, parents' RV outside of their house, uh, just quarantining for two weeks. Uh -huh. And even though we started writing then, and we finished in what June is July. It was like mid June. And then the editing process from took from July to like I feel like still now. <laughs> it was no, it was July to August. July to August. No, I would say July to September. Oh, it was July to September because we got married in August and our honeymoon. Like we, the first three days of our honeymoon, we didn't even all we did was work on the book. <laughs> That's what we were working on. And then we're like, maybe we should actually try to enjoy this. Yeah, and then, and then so we did nothing. We, we just had like a lot of edits and everything from July to September, mm -hmm. I would say. But I mean, I feel like the creating the book process starts even before you put like a, a pen to paper. This starts like once the, the idea starts to marinate and de develop in your mm -hmm. brain, and that the ideas and the conversations about this started maybe November, uh, October, November of 2019, yeah. which is still like a very short time to produce a book with an idea and one year later you have the actual thing oh yeah it is, a, it is a year later about a year yeah and the actual that. thing i have to keep showing it but the actual oh, yeah oh yeah yeah you, absolutely in fact i do too and i you know like here you go <laughs> That's what we had right before this call yeah right we were on our party. lunch party and the video is up on our page too if you still want to watch it uh -huh. <laughs> absolutely uh the i'm I have to just say what a great story this is today because when we were talking before and we were looking at this day and we were thinking well if you hadn't gotten to one number one status by the time that you were on the show at noon my time mm -hmm. um, you know that we would be you know like okay guys get your phone out let's 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 make this happen and Lo and behold, when is it that you actually knew you were number one in the first category? First, they still need to pull out phones. And yeah, you still need to pull out phones and get okay, pull out phones. Okay, pull it out. Go on Amazon, search "redefining normal." Justin Alexis Black, and you know, get your copy. It's ninety nine cents today. Like, what are you losing? It's a dollar. Right, right. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely all in. Um, like, this is yeah. dollars worth of material for ninety nine cents. But yeah, seriously, like. We spent basically our whole wedding gift on this. 
Yeah, it was so because we really believed in this. This was something that we hundred percent to our core believe that God put on our heart to do. Wow. And I mean, I'm like, how else would we have been able to write something like this in such a short amount of time? And what was also crazy is that um, as we were writing the book, uh, we didn't even read each other's parts until we printed the book off, like our first draft. And as we were reading it, we're like, oh my goodness, like the things, the parts that I leave out, he talks about the parts that he leaves out. I talk about, it was just like, we fill in each other's gaps and we didn't even plan that mm -hmm. <clears throat> in something. So like, I was like, that's so crazy to me that that happened. Um, and just the, also just the incredible and phenomenal feedback we've received from the people that have read the book so far, everybody on our launch team has received the book. And we were intentional that we didn't want everybody on our launch team to have a foster care background. We wanted people to have other backgrounds <laughs> mm -hmm. and and people that weren't in foster care got just as much out of it or more than the people that were because if you weren't in foster care you don't know that these things are happening and right. we start off the chapter with what do the statistics say and then what does god say and we did that because we want to show people that this is what the world told us we would be and then this is what god told us we would be and because we have to stay rooted in for our foundation of we're our Christianity and our faith versus what the world tells us around us. Um, and that has to go with our business, with success, with our marriage, with everything. The world is going to tell us that we're going to fail if we allow it to. And so how do we go for above and beyond that and be intentional about that? And so um, I use that word intentional. I should search how many times I, I write that in the book. It's probably a lot because that's how, that's how we live our life. That's our that's our mm -hmm. one of our core principles of being intentional on what we say, what we think, what we listen to, what we expose ourselves to, um, because that every single thing plays a role into our lives and to the opinions we form, the decisions we make, uh, the people we have around us, everything. Um, and if we're going to be successful or not at the end of the day. So, um, so yeah, that was, that's a little bit about it. <laughs> well, I'm going to play one more little clip right now in regards to the fact that you do have some of the comments that some of your readers have made. I love that video. Love How'd it. you guys do that? Um, on Fiverr. So if you've never been on Fiverr, use it. I use it for everything. Well, not everything. Pretty much everything that we put out, we do in house. Um, we through Canva or whatever. We figure out how to do it ourselves. But this was like twenty bucks. We're like, we're gonna get it done. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. Great friends, Ellis Bobby, who produced the beat for me. Um, that's actually the beat for an upcoming podcast that I'll be producing near the end of this month. And uh, we just thought that we loved it so much. You put it in our promo video. also. Yep. So. <laughs> I, I love it. So, um, so you're a podcaster. What is it that you're podcasting? What is your subject? What, tell us a little bit about this. So I gotta say, I love how you just have these videos. I know you, you're not prepared. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> if you know exactly what we're about to say. And, and I like, mentioned Whoop. podcast, like, Whoop, so you're a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> But um, and it was a little fun that that I did a little, you know, I had a few few things here. Yeah, we want to make it I fun. Love it. Yeah, I love the preparation. I love it. But um, so I have a business uh, called the Rose Empowerment Group, and Rose stands for Rising Over Societal Expectations. The hat is actually right here, Rising Over Societal Expectations T-shirt. The clothing and merchandise is coming soon. But the the uh, basics of this yes oh you are prepared listen i like listen. you so much so <laughs> thank you for that so, <laughs> so yes so the three components of the rose empowerment group is myself my community and my impact myself talks about character development how to be the best self the best person we can be before we even think about other people because you can't pour into someone else uh something that you don't have within you 
So it starts with just character development, goal setting, and just improving oneself to be the best version that you could be. Secondly, we go into my community and uh, redefining normal is kind of under the my community aspect of the Rose Empowerment Group. When we talk about healthy relationships as far as friendships, romantic partnerships, and even family relationships. And within my community is the group economics component of how can communities come together to use their resources to better their community, their area, and their neighborhood. And then lastly is my impact. So what, it, what is the impact that you leave on the world that will last beyond your lifetime? We think about things as far as systematic racism, what programs, businesses, and ideas and structures can you create within your neighborhood, within your local community that will offset those ideas of poverty and discrimination uh, within your community? So that's that. About the podcast. <laughs> oh, with the podcast, it's basically an extension of the Rose Empowerment Group. And it's called Rose from Concrete Podcast, where we talk about those three components, um, topics and themes related to those three components, and just anything slightly related. And we'll have on guests, and that will be something we'll be uh, discussing in the near future. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I Sorry to step on your words there in a moment. Uh, have I mean, since you were nominated by Lauren Harris, this is a question that makes a lot of sense. Have you thought about running for the next impactor this next season? I mean, <laughs> yes, um, I, I haven't, I haven't actually, but um, I mean, it would be something that that sounds lovely and, and I would definitely consider it and just, you know, it will be amazing to consider, but I haven't actually thought of it. No, I haven't. Well, that's the, that's the trophy from the first year. That's wow. The, uh, I love that. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. There were two, over 200 of us that ran uh, for the first one and uh, from all over the world. And uh, yeah, that's the one that they handed wow. to me when my name was called. So I get to hand the one to the second season, Next Impactor. So you might want to consider it. I love it because, I mean, there you're already saying that uh, impact, you know, so made me think. Mm. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is, a, a, I love the way that you've got it structured. Uh, the the podcast, then underneath it, you've got the Redefining Normal, the book, you've got the two of you. Mm. Okay, so Alexis, what's up with you? What What, what, what yeah. is your, what Not is your right. road going forward? <laughs> Um, so I started the scholarship expert, um, in 2016 to help students find and apply for scholarships to go to college debt free. Um, and with that, we've helped over 400 students so far. Um, and in, I think it was actually November that, um, uh, one of the directors at the Reagan Library, which is the video you showed, uh, she invited me to come speak at the Reagan Library once she heard that I was relaunching the scholarship expert, which was like a week prior. I had didn't put much thought into it. I just announced it. I put it out there to the world that I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna relaunch it, revamp it. And um, and then she called me and she said, um, Alexis, I want you to come speak at the at the Reagan Library, and I'll fly Justin out too. And I'm just crying. I'm like, oh my gosh, what a great opportunity. But then I'm like, oh my gosh. We gotta have something to present. Like we gotta have something to show. And so in six weeks, we uh, we wrote a book, we made a course and a workbook um, and a website. I made a couple websites and I never did that before. It was all these things I never did before. I never did one of those things before. And in six weeks, we taught ourselves how to do all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so it was mine wrecking to say the least like i was so stressed out the whole time um but but thankfully i moved back to michigan from dc i moved into his dorm room for the semester so i had full 24 hour access to this brain of his, <laughs> um, and his creativity and so it would not have been done without him and he even came with me um as you saw in the video and was like he's just my person like when i have something you know he's like carrying stuff and filming oh. and He's just like my person and I, you know, I do that for him when he does stuff too. But um, yeah, so we have that going on. Uh, and then we started um, the Rose Empowerment Group together. We did that. Well, it's his baby, but I made the website. She, she, if we, it wouldn't be a thing without her. <laughs> I, it's something that has been on my heart and been on my mind, but she pushed me to, she's like, she's like the, I'm always the person that would like get to the step and just stop and have an idea, but she's the person that push me, pushes me over to kind of make that idea come to life. Yeah, I'm like, you didn't go this far for no reason. Like, yeah. we're pushing it forward. We brainstormed like, the, the name, 
uh, our pastor put this on our heart and helped design the logo. Um, and Alexis has done again. Rose Empowerment Group wouldn't be a thing without her. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> without you, so I'll give you that. <laughs> well, Carol is saying, I hear next impact of competition for this couple. Ooh, that'd be oh. awesome. And you know, there were couples, and in fact, on the this right. top five for the top five, right? One, two, three, yeah. four, five. The and there was actually six of us on that stage because one of the one of the numbers was a couple. So a couple wow. numbers and they came in fifth and then went fourth and then third and then you know second and then I always uh, you know you had to look back on it you know the the evening the video from it and it might just be inspiring however I think you're right Carol I think it just might be and you know I was on a show myself the very first time I ever heard about the impactor mm -hmm. and it was like okay I'll have to check into that and lo and behold the rest of it is history and so you know I, I I absolutely it's like okay well you know Lauren Harris did did actually nominate you guys to be here. So he, he is he's one of the co-founders of the original, you know, of the uh the next impactor, the global it. next impactor. So yes, yes. And so with that, I am going to take a minute. Guilty pleasure. I get to do that. I'm hope you guys will be okay with it because three weeks from today guys again get your phones out make sure that you have the calendar set that three weeks from today we go and we will be kicking off 36 hours of programming and it is what i ran on the next impactor with it's the platform of what we're going to be showing right now and and we're going to be having the next jerry lewis telethon is what I have been saying ever since I started this three years ago, we had the very first one. This one, we are airing worldwide, 80 million screens, yes. And we have incredible, incredible talent that right now we are signing up and getting ready to start making announcements. And you guys are all gonna be entertained. You're gonna be inspired. You're gonna be educated. And what is it all about? Well, I'm gonna share that right now. Life is so fragile, and we're constantly reminded just how fragile life can be, especially when we or a loved one is told we have cancer. Cancer survivor myself, I can tell you, we still feel very alone in this journey. There's a study that's been shown that patients who are socially isolated have a worse prognosis have a worse outcome than patients who are socially interconnected. Buddies for Life is a non-profit cancer support group for those whose life has been impacted by cancer. We'll match you with the perfect buddy. Humor, hope, heart, and hugs. Humor, hope, heart, hugs, and a whole lot of love. We're offering you a free membership, so please sign up today. Share this with your friends and family and support this community in every way you can. No one should face cancer alone. I am a chemo buddy for life. We are a buddies network. No one does cancer alone. Be a buddy. And we are all here for you as a community of love. We are chemo buddies for life. And if you've heard three words, you have cancer, for yourself or someone else, you belong with us at chemo buddies for life. Healing through connections. So, yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever known anybody that's had cancer? Yes. My, uh, God, my godfather um, passed away from cancer. And that was definitely one of the, one of the most difficult things I think I've gone through. Because he was my, my first strong male role model. Um, and kind of watching him deteriorate in front of me and not knowing what was going on because nobody told me that he did. Um, and so just seeing that, yeah, that was, it was extremely difficult. <laughs> well, I want to welcome you to our buddies then because you would then qualify to be one of our buddies because you see, we support the people that are affected by cancer. Like I'm a survivor. 
and then the people that love and support them because they need buddies too and we heal through connection with ourselves with buddies and through community very much like rose and so because community is so important we can absolutely change the world by and we are going on the tour of love yes guys yeah. we are raising the vibration and we're doing it in a groovy way so yes <laughs> three <laughs> weeks from today <laughs> we're gonna be having a lot of fun and we are going to be making a difference throughout the world so join us join us everybody make sure to put it in your calendars make sure to know that you're going to be here three weeks from today to kick it all off and you're not going to want to leave because you're going to be having too much fun and it's going to grip you you're going to be wanting to stay <laughs> so you two are absolutely at the beginning of an amazing journey you talk about a tour you talk about a journey you talk about a lifetime mm -hmm. and you guys have done the prep work you really are so i i have to just say i'm so impressed mm -hmm. uh by by the two of you and and it gives me so much hope and in fact that's a big part of what we're about humor hope heart hugs and a whole lot of love wow. and through conditions that is what our message is and you see you two encompass that and what we are out there also helping people to understand is that those that have been through traumas like the foster care system mm -hmm. there are some good stories yes However, there's so many that have trauma associated with. We need to help heal these people and all of them through these programs like what you're talking about, or they're going to end up coming to us because they didn't get that healing taking place. And what you're talking about with generational healing that needs to take place, we need to make this happen. And as a global family, a global community, we absolutely can and that's why i love doing the research that i do on our service heroes because it gives me so much hope that there are people that are inspiring that have the inspiring stories that are then going to inspire others and you see you have inspired me today you have inspired others today and yes Yes, thank you for sharing the love. Lori, I love you. So glad you're here with us. One of our buddies and an author that also that has donated books that we're going to be auctioning off. Uh, most time foster care homes are not the best for our children. And that's the truth. And 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 Carol, thank you for being one of our senior ambassadors because you recognize what we are doing to make a difference and we are making a difference. So as we start to close up right now, I'd love to hear from both of you any kind of words of wisdom that you would like to share. Um, she just put me on the spot just like I guess. You always just have well, the um, words ready. <laughs> uh, so I think a common theme is, in this is a lot about mindset and what we believe. And a lot of what we think, uh, I forget the exact quote, I think it was Henry Ford who said it, that you, think you can or you think you can't, then you're right. And I think a lot about our worldly circumstances and situations, no matter who we're around, it's just about mindset and what we believe. So I think that once we continue to improve our mindset and, and put our mind in a certain place, even without what, think, what the situation looks like physically and uh, uh, what things look like as we see with our eyes, if we can set our mind on things that are above the current situation, I think that we can continue to move forward as individuals and see the best in one another. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's hard to put on the spot. <laughs> um, but I, I think I would just say, um, like one of the things that, that I think Justin mentioned before, um, 
but but very briefly was um, the idea that we're not meant to be independent. We're meant to be interdependent. We're meant to rely on other people and build that community and build that network. And that was one of the most difficult things for me to learn just because um, as other people, I'm sure that have uh, felt this as well, that when you grow up in foster care, you have to learn how to survive and depend on yourself and not really de depend on or rely on anybody else because um, they break your heart, they stab you in the back, they let you down, they disappoint you, whatever it may be. And it, it's really difficult to rely and depend on other people. But at the end of the day, we're not going to be successful. We're not going to grow. We're not going to be healthy. All the different things we're not going to be if we don't have other people around us. And so I just always point out to people the importance of being interdependent and, and relying on other people and building up a community around you of people that are your supporters and are your community. And also one of the with that, the one of the greatest lessons is that we have the power to choose that community and to choose who our family is. And I only learned that through foster care. I think I don't I don't think that if I wasn't in foster care, I would have learned that because I see so many pe people around me that really try to kill themselves in a way to um, gain uh, respect or approval or support from their blood family. And it's like, but they're just by blood. That's not loyalty. You get to choose who's that person for you. Who who are those people in your corner? And that's what I've absolutely loved. Like even in our wedding, um, it was mostly foster adoptive family and people from school. <laughs> I love it. And, and administrators and other people and people that see the scholars program. Like there are people that have poured into us um, and we pour into them because we believe in being um, mutually beneficial in, in our, all of our relationships, but it, it's, that's our community and that's what we built. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I'm going to put it up here one more time. Everybody, everybody, I'm taking the challenge. I want everybody else to, to get the book. This is an opportunity for you to be hearing some real relevant words. I can't wait to read what you were talking about, how you didn't know what each other were writing. And then it was like you were finishing each other's sentences or thoughts or whatever it is, you know. Oh, I'm going to have to have you guys back <laughs> in, in like in a, for an anniversary show or something like, okay, how's it going? You know, and, 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 and keep up on it. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, if you, oh, wink, wink. If you guys join the next Impactor, I'm going to be involved because they're going to bring me back to work with the different teams. So that would be fun. That would wink, be wink. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. And so, yes, I, I love it. So you guys, for less than a dollar, not even the price of coffee. Come on, let's, you know, let's. Let's let's share the love. It's all about the love, the humor, hope, heart, hugs, and a whole lot of love. Let's share it today. Let's really just, you know, and then once you read it, can you put a comment in there? Give a review. Let's get those numbers really up there, too, because that's going to go a long way with the relevance of the book. I love it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> slow mo. <laughs> that works. That works for me. You guys are absolutely stellar. I love having you with me today on this big, big, big launch day on uh, the November the 9th. And, you know, made the best, you know, best wishes and congratulations, right? Isn't that how it works? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. When, and you guys can just, you know, take it both for all that it's worth, because I have a feeling that you are going to have just an amazing time traveling life together. And what a gift that is. Mm -hmm. True gift. I agree. Thank you. Yes. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much for having us on here. It's a, it's a blessing to be able to launch today and to be on here and just to talk to you and your audience about our lives and what we have going on. So thank you for giving us this platform. We appreciate that. Yes. Thank well, you. So you're welcome. It was my pleasure. So with that, okay, we'll be back on Wednesday. More about the tour of love. Everybody be ready. Three weeks from today, we are taking off. See you soon. See you Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>